Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center. Therapy. Feel like you're falling apart? Let us help you find the missing pieces in your life. Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center, PCWC, provides a variety of therapeutic counseling services geared towards helping individual families and the communities. Our goal is to assist individuals holistically through our transpersonal counseling psychological services. We are also available on Psychology Today. Give us a call today. Hello lovelies, hello family, and welcome. Welcome to my channel. This is Kimberly Purpose, and welcome. I'm trying a different software this time uh, with you know, video filmmaking software. I'm, I'm video editing. I'm gonna see if this works. <laughs> This is my first time using this one, so. But today I want to talk about the Catawba um, Indians. Um, I, I touched on the Catawba Indians uh, when I talked about Horace King, the engineer that um, designed bridges throughout the southeast, and he was around during the 1800s, and he was pretty well known. Y'all may want to check out that video to learn more about Horace King. But on this video, I'm going to touch more on, on the Catawba Indians because he was a Catawba Indian. He was um, considered to be mixed, but um, mixed with um, American Aborigine, you know, which is a Catawba Indian. And um, yeah, but anyway, I found this particular article. I'm going to see if I can pull it up. I'm going to come on over here. I'm not sure if y'all are coming with me, but I have it on the screen here about the Catawba Nation. And um, I found this article through the charlottemuseum.org, um, and I wanted to share it with you all about Catawba um, Indian Nation. And I'm going to also share a little bit of information um, from a book that I have on indigenous tribes which I found to be quite interesting but I'm going to share it with you all but the Catawba Indian Nation is um, this particular article was written by Richard Carney I don't see a particular date on here it doesn't say but it's from the Charlotte uh, Museum of History let me see if the bottom doesn't have a date um, there's no date here at the bottom either but it does have the sources where and and that, that's what I like about this article that it does have some references uh, so source it cites its source of where it got its information from but anyway it says the Catawba Indian Nation is one of the indigenous tribes that settled the Carolina Piedmont over 10,000 years ago. So it's been here. They're very um, ancient tribe. They've been here. They hunted and farmed their ancestral land in the Piedmont area of North Carolina and South Carolina. So they're part of the Southeast, the, the Southeast Woodland Indians. The Catawbas was one of the most powerful tribes of the Carolinas. At the time of Euro contact in the mid 1500s, their population estimated over 8,000. Today, the Catawba of a are a federal recognized tribe with approximately 2,800 people living on reservations of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Smaller groups live in parts of Oklahoma and uh, Colorado. So, I found this article to be quite interesting. They explain, like you said, like I said before, we have to read between the lines because they do not include the American Aborigines, the um, AKA African Americans. Um, like we said before, we um, a lot of the, uh, the original Indians were reclassified as black and, um, and they are the Pele Indians, the 10,000 um, years ago, but I am still back here. I'm not sure if this is showing everything as I move it along, but I'm going to still continue to talk. I'm 
there's a link to this particular article and I'll continue reading on about the Catawba. Let me see here. Um, still trying to figure this thing out. Let me continue reading on this article. Now we're going to stroll down here. The Catawba is a several sewing and uh, sewing language native american tribes to occupy the carolinas settling in the area around surrounding the catawba um, river valley they call themselves the yuhiwa people of the river along the cherokee and iroquois the catawba controlled important trading paths through north carolina and controlled the trade routes was advantageous to put the tribes in power and position. However, it was not long before European settlers took over. Those trade routes and the Catawba powers were slowly taken. So, yeah, um, I think okay, it's working. It looks like it's strolling down. That's what I was concerned about, whether y'all will be able to see the screen. But I wanted to share this book with you all. I'm putting it on here. It's called The... American Indian Almanac by John Upton Terrell. I may take a picture of it, um, the part that talks about the Catawba Indians, but I want to read a section because it was talking about how they um, occupied certain regions and how they had um, their fault against different tribes. But according to the American Indian Almanac on page, let me see if I can find it here. I believe it's in page, uh, page one, uh, 132 and page 133. Um, there's, it, it gives references as to the size of the population. According to this particular Article it says 8,000 is estimated. We got to also remember that they did not, you know, this is prior to the census. The census was not established until 1790. And they said this, and they, um, according to this particular article, they have rough estimates, so they really don't know. And so we got to keep that in mind with a critical eye that they really don't know exactly how many people were here in the Americas, how many indigenous people were here. They just estimated 8,000 and they really don't know. They never really went and did an accurate count because the estimate is not accurate. You know, it doesn't give a precise number. And plus they were still learning about the regions in this area when they first came here, the Europeans. So they weren't familiar with the area, so they're just spilling out numbers, rough estimates. And we estimate means that they're guessing, in other words. And we gotta keep that in mind. And when you do research, you use a critical eye and realize that um, estimation means to estimate, it's not precise. So they don't really know. And then here in this, uh, the almanac, they quote the, let's see, Catawba. I believe I saw it right here. I didn't highlight it in the book. Hmm. I'm looking, you guys. Let's see here. Here it is. It says the Catawba Sasoan called themselves the Matera. And the Catawba lived in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Tennessee. So we got to also keep in mind what regions these people are from, this tribe is from. They are from the South Carolinas, North Carolinas, and Tennessee. And everybody who are, you know, trying to discover their family tree, um, start thinking about what region your family originated from and where they come from. So you can start pinpointing exactly where your indigenous roots lies. It says here also on page 133, the eminent archeologist Frank G. Speck believed that the great migration of the Cherokee was much longer than I suggested in 
on my own analysis. He advised that the starting theory of the Cherokee originated in the basin of Orinoco and the Amazon River in South America. It is based contentions that none of the southeastern tribes except the Cherokee and possibly their neighbors, the Catawbas, rim their basin baskets and with a thin oak loop bound fast with hickory fiber, a characteristic of the basins made by natives of the Orinoco and Amazon basins. Also, both Cherokee and the South American Indians employed the double weave and the chain and diagonal patterns. So they, he studied the culture of the basket weaving, um, sort of tied in with the, um, South America. So they, you know, according to this archaeologist, he believed that there may have been a correlation of a migration. You know, they did some research also, um, archaeologists that theorized uh, that a lot of the people uh, from the tip of South America, the Brazils, they found American Aboriginal bones that look exactly like the American Aborigines here today, the AKA African Americans. So, um, and then they're showing proof that they are more than likely migrated from South America on up to the um, to um, the United States, which is now you know the Central America, and moving up to North America, you know. So they're showing that there was some sort of migration, that there's some sort of movement. They oftentimes try to say that a lot of the American Aborigines have died off and that they don't exist. But if you look at the cultural remains, looking at the facets, this um, archaeologist also pointed out the resemblance of the South American baskets that were brought up to North America looks awfully alike and by these tribes so i just wanted to point that out to you guys and it's in this book here um the american indian almanac and let's continue on let's go back over here it says here though the catawba state neutral trading wars colonial conflict among the european disease have very dramatic effect on the Catawba people. The Tukarora War of 1711 and 1713 and the Yamasee War of 1715, both fought over the control of routes, proved that European and fur traders and Indian slave traders were a constant threat to the Catawba people. See? Indian slave traders. Okay? I want y'all to notate that. The Indians were put into slavery. And that's what we oftentimes forget and fail to realize that the Indians were also slaves too. And so majority of the people that they captured and put into slavery were the American Aborigines who are the Indians. And so that's why we gotta look at things at a critical eye. This particular um, writing right here in the charlotte museum uh, dot org is uh, is solidifying everything is supporting the evidence that we've been saying that the indians were the slaves they are american aborigines they one and the same people they're the paleo indians that were here from the very beginning we always been here and it's written right here before our very eyes it says constant threat of Catawba people and so they were threatened the Catawba people who are also the American Aborigines which I mentioned before the engineer Oris King is a Catawba Indian he was considered American Aborigines well they called him African American but nationality is an American Aborigine and most of them look like him you know, with the dark skin and with the wool, uh, no, woolly hair. And so, Negro features, Negro Indians in other words. The words combined with the disease were too much for the Catawba to survive. 
And this was why they, and this is the character here, they try to say that everyone died off and they used these smallpox as a way to justify reclassifying everybody who were there originally, the American Aborigines, as black. And so, in other words, to black them out and say that they never exist in the first place so they can try to claim lands that does not belong to the European Americans of today. By 1728, the population was down to around 1,400. They, and let's remember that these are rough estimates. They don't know. They really don't know. And like I said, smallpox epidemics in 1738 and 1759 brought the numbers down to approximately 7,500. And see, this is they saying approximately, but really they don't know. Once again, like we said, um, they just did a census in 1790, and you got to look at dates and, cor- and and how easily convenient it is to downplay the numbers of the Aborigines in order to reclassify them as Indians, and then put down in the 19th census that there were very few Indians so they can have land rights. So all of this was a ploy. And if you look at the numbers, you can see the correlation and how easy it is to falsify information just so you can justify taking over the land. If you have it that everybody was died off from disease and then, you know, and make it simpler to just justify the um, that nobody was there and putting down Caucasians as being Americans when actually they weren't the original Americans, the original American Aborigines. They've been um, brainwashed out of history. And it says, by the time of the French Indian War of 1754 through 1763, the Catawba Indians wanted no involvement with colonial affairs. And you can't really blame them, you know, because they saw exactly what they were doing. And they pretty much could, you know, if everything was written by uh, the, the Caucasians, you know, the European Americans, then, of course, it's going to be written in their favor. None of the indigenous people had the opportunity to write their side of the story. The story has been tilted and always been that way to slant in favor of the victor or whoever won these wars. So it says here, this is the map. Of the territory. I don't know if you all can see that, but it says the map showing the location of Catawba Indian land, which influenced the North Carolina, South Carolina border, courtesy of the Charlotte Museum of History. Here it is, right here. Um, there's South Carolina and there's North Carolina, and this is where they originate from. So Let's see here. I'm going to go to, uh, I mentioned the, the basket weave. Here is the pottery that they're showing as well. The pottery. And so, like I said, this approximately is not accurate because they don't really know. Because they didn't even have a census in existence at that time. And really, we all know that the census was made up. And if, it, if the only people that were writing it down and putting down whatever they wanted to put down, um, of course they're going to put down lower numbers to justify being there and taking over land rights. You know, they put whatever number in the, you know they want to put down. So let's put down, let's go on to page number 30, 137. This particular page of, I'm sorry, of the American... Almanac. Hopefully, y'all can see that the American Almanac. That's what I'm looking at. I'm gonna probably take a picture. I'm gonna, you know, put this up so y'all can see it, you know, in my blog. But it says here. It goes on to say here the earliest Shawnee homes of archaeologists discovered is not believed to have the habitat of. Re- Relatively late in the prehistoric period in Ohio, they seem to have drifted slowly southward in the numbers of years. 
Fresh traders breaking wilderness trowel the old great lakes regions, herded them. The largest part of the Shawnee was living in the Cumberland basins of the Tennessee. Then it goes on to say that the intervening country was occupied by the Cherokee. And Mooney thinks it possible that Cherokee invited the Shawnee to saddle upon them an eastern frontier in order to serve as a barrier against the attacks of the Catawba and other enemies that were in the directions. No such necessar- necessity existed for protection on their northwest frontier. The Catawba was one of the most powerful and hostile of the eastern Sisuan tribes. They long engaged warfare with the Iroquois, Cherokee, Shawnee, and other people. So they were in war with each other. They were fighting among each other, the tribes of the Southeast Woodlands. So they were constantly battling it out between each other. And there has been some stories, too, that the Europeans, you know, sort of, you know, uh, threw in their little share of mischief or uh, Riff raft in order to keep the battle going, in order to sneak in and take over. You know, what better way is to keep the chaos going? And and when you do that, you keep people apart from each other. They didn't think of them. You no, know, look at race like Caucasian does, but you know they looked at it according to what tribe you're from, and that's why they fought. You know, they may be the same color. Um, same ethnic background, but they still fought among themselves of you no know, over territories. And so, if you keep them fighting among themselves, what better way is to come in and swoop in and take over? And there was no um, togetherness, you know, connecting together to make things right between the tribes. And if they had a combined and worked together as a team, as a collaborative. Um, you know, working together, then the Europeans wouldn't have never been able to take over in the first place. And see, unfortunately, um, this was new to the American Aborigines, the uh, Native Americans. So that's why, you know, the battles continued. And hopefully one day, everyone will open their eyes and a lot of these bickering still no will stop and people will start working together and realize, hey, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, this group over here and this group over here, especially, you know, the black and white coalition. That's the black and not black and white coalition, but the um, black and uh, black and brown coalition, which is crazy to me. There's no such thing. I did a video on that. And there's no such thing as black and brown. It's just brown. We're all brown people. The black people are the brown people. We're one and the same. They just divided us according to to keep us apart. You know, if everybody thinks that they're so different from each other, then everybody fight among each other. You know, it's crazy. We all need to look at the bigger picture. And but I did a video about how race is a social construct. But I'm going to continue on with this article. <laughs> you know, I can go on and on. It says here, during the American Revolution, the Catawba fought the colonies and held fight against the British and the Cherokee neighbor, and the Cherokee neighbors. So the Catawbas fought against the Cherokee. You know, I'm a Cherokee. And so... I guess they fought against my ancestors. And it says here, the Battle of Class Mill of 1781, the Catawba were the instrumental in supporting the American millennia. And it's at Clap Mills of the beginning of the stretch of the battles that was devastating for Lord Charles Cornwallis and his tribe. And at the end of the revolution, the Catawba people returned to the reservation of South Carolina. The founders destroyed. There were only around 30 families living in the reservations and like i said these are all prior it's just so conveniently this is 1781 you gotta look at the dates you guys right before the census now all these numbers have you know they were a larger amounts of uh, a larger population at first now all of a sudden before they do the census they drop off the numbers and what better way you know we look at Benjamin Franklin's writings. 
he said that there were so many of them, so many blacks. That's what he described the indigenous aborigines as blacks. So if he didn't describe them as black and he said so many of them, and this is prior to all this slave trading and all this stuff that they claimed. All they did was capture the indigenous people that were over here and then reclassify them as being black. That makes more logical sense to me than bringing over millions of people like they claim over on the boats and they didn't have the technology to resource or the technology really the technology to be able to bring over massive millions amounts of people over the Atlantic Ocean which has storms and high incidences of um, shipwrecks along that region that they claim that they brought the American Aborigines from the story just does not make sense it's been debunked but let's continue. It says, much of the 19th century was difficult to the Catawba with help with the newly formed American government of South Carolina. The Catawba struggled to find a permanent settlement and a meeting of the National Fort of 1840. The Catawbas agreed to relinquish their land to South Carolina. Uh, the government agreed to spend 5000 on new land for a reservation. I do not believe the Catawbas believe, uh, signed off their land rights. It's just that they were tricked back into it. Um, a lot of them didn't understand the English probably. That's foreign language to them. And a lot of them couldn't read and write. So they can't how can you agree to something if you don't understand what you're reading or you're signing? So like I said, this whole this is just frivolous stuff. And um like I said, it was done as a way to trick back people into signing something that was never agreed to in the first place. You know, the final settlement of 630 acres track of land along the bank of the Catawba River through the Civil War. Some of the Catawba fought with the Confederate troops, but most tried to stay outside of American affairs. And here's the beautiful pottery, you guys, right here, the Catawba pottery, courtesy of Charlotte uh, McElmurray of the Historic Lands of Commission. A lot of these um, potteries and stuff have been stolen um i mentioned that in another video y'all may want to check it out i talked about a lot of the um the looting of a lot of uh historic artifacts in indian mounds all throughout the americas have been ransacked by grays by the european americans and so a lot of these things are missing and so that's why I was saying a lot of the graves, they claimed that all these people died during a certain time period. That's what I had to, we have to use our critical thinking skills. Well, if there were so many people that died, where are these graves? Where are the mass grave sites? Where are the mass burials? Nowhere to be found. Uh, a lot of the stuff that they claim they have, there's no uh, forensics, um, scientific evidence if a lot of stuff been ransacked and stolen then how can you say that all of this is true these are the questions we need to ask if you're going to state something as being factual then supportive evidence su su substantiate for the evidence you know there's no substantial evidence to support all these findings that they say that they have found that's what all i'm gonna have to say like they, if there was all these diseases, then there should be millions of bodies laying everywhere during that time period. There should be burials everywhere. Where are these bodies that they claim? Okay. And why is it, you got to also look at the timing, that these people all miraculously just disappeared right before the census. How convenient. And if they wanted to be fat, more factual, how come none of the indigenous people were involved in the writings of all these documents that they write? You know, if it's only one group writing everything, of course you're going to slant everything in your favor. And if it's in your favor, then it's not facts. It's based on speculation and perceived notions on one particular group one person's fancy fantasy so it is like i said 
Um, it's just a lot of uh, holes in their story. It just doesn't make sense. And now that we're having access to these resources, we can finally see that there's a lot of holes in the stories that the Europeans have written in this indoctrinated system that they created. It says here, the Catawba survives colonial expansion, the war, the disease, and continue to fight for their cultural identity in the 20th century. After a long struggle, uh, struggling American government, the Catawba received recognition from South Carolina in 1973, which is fairly recent, not too long ago, only almost 50 years ago. And it says it took only 20 years of court battles to receive official recognition. And usually the people that are seen in these tribes are, are um, considered, um, you know, you're, you would consider them more like Europeans. A lot of these federally recognized tribes do not even have the indigenous people. Most of the indigenous people have been marginalized and reclassified as being black. And it's probably only a handful of them that are mixed. And then all the rest of them are Caucasian. Go 10 generations back, I would say. Maybe four. But I think if you're going past, uh, you know, maybe one or two generations, you could say that. But most of them going back or even farther, you're Caucasian. I'd say if you're, if, you know, I explained that in another video. No such thing as black and brown, only brown. And also another video I've done about, you know, about this topic, you know. Um, Y'all may want to check them out. I go into more detail explaining all of this. And it says the, um, it took another 20 years for the court battles to receive federal recognition, money and support, education program and purchase land which I said before are the five dollar Indians. Um, they're the ones that got the money and, and they are the Caucasian Americans and maybe a slightly mixed admixture of the American Aborigines might have gotten some. But the original mass groups of the people who are the original people did not get any type of reparation who they call at, uh, AKA African Americans. The ones who were here prior to, I would say, the 1940s or maybe the early 1900s, you know, the ones who've been here um, prior to 1865. If you can trace your family root, I say probably from the early 1900s on back, then you're an indigenous person here. Because <laughs> a lot of, uh, um, the Africans, the true Africans, they didn't start coming into the States until like uh, the night, I would say 1960s, you know, 40s and maybe 1960s, uh, who willingly came over here. But the original people who are indigenous here, been here prior to the 1900s, 1800s. If you can trace your family tree, you've been here. <laughs> you've been here. So, um, yeah. And it says here, they just missed us in, you know, but, you know, they didn't send how, you know, yeah. But anyway, Catawba are known for their pottery, social service programs, and continually they fight to preserve their culture. So I would say to be more accurate, the true indigenous aborigines were here from the late 18 i would say to be even more accurate late 1800s since the ending of slavery that night 1865 67 somewhere around in there those are the originals you know people that was here and so they say here that Catawba was known for the pottery and i mentioned before the pottery um they said looks awfully like the the pottery from south america the amazon probably in the Brazils or similar and and so and they've been here for 10,000 years so they're more likely related to the Paleo Indians you may be even mixed in with a little bit of the Mongoloids who came later 
But anyway, the, uh, which they call the Native Americans. And at the bottom here, they have their sources, which I think is really awesome with this particular article. They got the Augusta Conference, Catawba Indians. And then um, this one's dated um, from 2006. Then, uh, and here are another one. They don't have any original sources here, though. Because I'm looking at here, they just uh, regurgitating some of the recent writings. Um, they don't go back further to the earlier writings from these uh, scholarly research journal articles. These are from, this is from a website right here, I noticed. This is from another encyclopedia. And also this one's, this reference is from another uh, website as well. And see, and it'll be interesting. I'm gonna pull some more scholarly research journal articles because those are even more accurate and even support the theory that we have before about the American Aborigines be, being Australianoids, you know, being uh, the original people here, the uh, Paleo Indians, you know, and it even supports this even further, the theory. But this is going, um, I'm going to shoot, try to shoot another video. I'm going to go over some of the pictures that I've seen um, showing what they have before let me see something let me see if it'll pull up let me go back here and see if y'all see it nah uh, it doesn't show i'm gonna have to split this video in half so let's see hello lovelies hello family hello um i decided to go on to the google to share with you all um some pictures and images of what they have right now for the Katawa Indians. Um, like I said, they had the federally uh, recognized tribe and the Katawa Indians that they have right now, I'm gonna show you right here. These are probably considered the uh, federally recognized tribe. And you can see right now that especially, you know, they're looking more European and there may be some uh, sprinkles amidst Catawba Indians, but majority of them are Europeans, the Five Dollar Indians, that um, claiming Catawba heritage and um, are the ones that are getting um, got re rewarded a lot of the rights. You see that with a lot of the um, federally recognized tribes. I was trying to show you a picture. I don't know if it's going to show. This is right here, what the Catawba Indians originally looked like. They were darker complexion Indians, and some of them had Negro features. And um, here's one um, during that time period in particular. I've seen her picture a lot. And... Like I said, um, this is, I guess, these are what they, how, what they lived in during that time period, which I find to be quite interesting with the different houses. Hopefully I can see it right here. But they considered the teepees, you know, but they're, these are how they lived. It's beautifully done and it gives you a feel of what it was to live during that time period. And I also want to go over some more photos here. Let me see. That was a couple that I saw. And here was some artwork right here. Colonial Quills, Catawba Indian. One of the rare paintings of the Indians right here. What they look like. You know? I'm not sure what year this was painted. It would have been nice to know. But, um... Here's the artwork right here. And I saw something else right here, I'm not sure. Here's some more artwork. 
um, they don't have the dates on these things, so it's hard to say. And I saw this, this these are considered African Americans, you know, they always try to classify all the African Americans as being slaves. I went to this website and they try to say, that, oh, they're slaves, but more than likely we know that they were the captured indigenous aborigines here because they've been, it's already been proven that it, they didn't bring over hardly no slaves. You know, all they did was capture the indigenous people. And that was also mentioned in the story that a lot of the um, Indians were afraid of being captured and thrown into slavery. So that tells you that they were one and the same, pretty much. And scroll down and see, unfortunately, it's not too much on the Catawbas, you know? Like I said, and these are what they consider to be federally recognized. And you can see that their um, pillar skin, someone can even pass as Caucasian almost, pretty much. And these are probably mixed. But the original people are still not there. And you're not going to see that. Because uh, most of the P5 Indians are in these tribes. They're not the original people at all. Okay, they really aren't. They're either the midst or mostly Caucasian. And so, yeah. And then they probably go back, I would say over three to four generations back um, with the Catawba Indian, which I say is too far back because you no longer um, indigenous, I would say. If you're going well over two generations, two or three generations, and you miss them with European, then you're European. You're no longer an indigenous person anymore. You're European. But, you know, that's just how it goes. You know, that's why they like the one drop rule, because the one drop rules allows any and everyone to be the original person. You know, an Indian. That way, they can classify themselves as being indigenous and getting lands and just removing everybody else that are darker complexion off. But these are, I just wanted to show you how a lot of these photos have been graywashed and a lot of the original people look more European. And if you look at the original photo of this one, this lady during that time period, one of the few and rare pictures, you see the darkness of it. You see how they originally look. And then you look at the pictures of today. They're looking more European. Color skin. You know, the midst. They don't look like the original people. And that's just like how they did with the Australian the uh, Australian Aborigines, they got a lot of pale looking, you know, uh, Aborigines there trying to claim indigenous heritage and when really they're mostly Caucasian, you know. Now she might be more indigenous. You can see she got some of the features. Now she's darker complexion. But then if you go over here, you see everybody's pale. You're not going to see the original people in any of these tribes. They're taking them all, unfortunately. And they kept the mixed looking ones in. All right, this one's probably a mixed race. But you're not going to see the ones, the original ones, because they threw them into slavery. They said it in their books, in the history books. They were afraid of being thrown into slavery and a lot of them were. And if everybody knows, they classified all the people who were enslaved. They classified them as being um, black. So that's just how it went. I wanted to go into another browser, but I'm afraid that's not going to show up at all if I do <laughs> on this one also shows the territories again right in here that North Carolina and South Carolina area that's where they originate and see the Cherokees was in Georgia so they was like next door to each other 
and that's when they were battling and now Georgia's right in here. So, yeah. But I just wanted to share that with you all so y'all can see what they're doing, you know, how they pretty much um, rewatched everything and you're not gonna see us. You're just not. And it's just how it goes. But I would love to um, hear from you guys and see what you all think about the American Aborigines and about the Catawba, um, Catawba Indians and what you all think about it. Um, yeah. And if y'all want to learn more about Horace King, he was a Catawba Indian as well. And you can learn more about Horace King in some of my videos I have him as well and you know please like this video thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and um, I would love to hear from you guys love and peace bye bye